Okay, so with me now is someone that, that's doing the roasting tonight. I know. He probably <laughs> never are. speak to me again in his Have life. Have you ever roasted anyone before? No. I can't even roast potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what it is, though, a roast, because it's, it's, a lot of people won't have heard of this. You basically just get to take the mick out of Pete for two hours. I think it's an American thing. And uh, what it is... You get up and you, you've got to like absolutely slaughter them, but in a nice way. Yeah. But I'm not doing it in a nice way. Well, he's not, he's not going to see this until probably tomorrow. So, so just tell us one of the things you've got in your head lined up to say. About his age. <laughs> his age. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say I can't believe I've seen so many dis posh cars in a disabled bay. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, what's the other one? He's always gone for younger men. Oh, yeah. Because in this case, now, if you went for older men, they'd probably be dead <laughs> by now. <laughs> but a lot of it is going to be spontaneous tonight as well. Yeah. That must be difficult to do. Or, or is it? Well, I've know. made some notes, key notes. So it's, it's hard because you've got to be cruel. Yeah. But you've got to be cruel to be kind. And I know he's not going to take it to heart. <laughs> well, we will, we'll, we'll, fingers crossed for that. Because he so. filled me up and he went, oh, what am I doing? But I don't think, you know, it's not evil. Yeah. It's like... It's good banter. To the bone. Yeah, yeah. Maybe through the juggler as well. You've known him a long, long time. Um, I've known Pete a long, long time. What do you love best about Pete Cross? I love Pete Cross's piece. He doesn't... Um, it doesn't change. You know, he's dead down to earth. Um, and he's just like a, a legend for Liverpool, really, isn't he? And uh, I'm quite honoured that he's asked me to do his roasting, even if he doesn't speak to me again. Even if you've never roasted the you'll be fine. I am, no. Listen, Chrissy, thank you for getting involved. Oh, we can't wait you. to see you. Oh my Good God. luck. All right then. If you need me to phone you a taxi at any point, if he gets a bit too heated, then I can do that for you. All right Chrissy then. Rock, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Now, someone else who's got the honour of, of roasting Mr. Price this evening is... Sounds rude, that's it. Less tennis it does. I was tweeting before and I thought, I'm going to see Pete Price get roasted. And I thought, I can't tweet that. You can't tweet that. No, tell you us, tell us can't. what a roasting is from what you know. Well, yeah, it, kind of, it goes back to Dean Martin uh, in Vegas used to have comedy roasts. I was looking at them today knowing I was going to be here tonight. And, you know, he used to get... Dean Martin used to get roasted by the likes of Orson Welles, Gene Kelly, James Stewart... Uh, Don Rickles, all the all the comics, Bob Hope, and they just basically slagged him off. You know, did all the stuff about him drinking. He's been drinking since he was seven when he um, he had a popsicle with an olive in it. So all that kind of stuff, you know. So tonight is open season on Pete Price. He's asked for it, so he's gonna get it. Have you ever done this before? Um, I've done things like there was a, there was a thing for Stan in the city recently. And the best thing to do was just have a go at him. Because, you know, all comics have a go at each yeah. other. You know, we don't get to work with each other because you all go out as comics separately. So it's nice to all get together and have open fire. Yeah, and take the big out of each other. Yeah. You've known Peter a very long time. Since um, the early days, since the Shakespeare yeah. Theatre Club. Yeah. So you've got a lot of material to, to get through tonight, Les. I remember him in his hot pants, you know? Yeah. Pete's gay, did you know? He's good Apparently, show. he's gay. <laughs> I never knew that. I never knew that either. Well, you obviously have known him a long time. But yeah. What do you love best about Pricey? And what he's done for the area as well. He's done a hell of a lot. I absolutely love him. You know, um, he'll ring me up and he'll say, listen, like I'm doing a play at the, at the Royal Court later this, in a couple of months. And he'll just say, come and talk to me and we'll do an hour special. I love that he loves all the people that he's grown up with and, and we're, we're, we're still all here. That's the great thing. A lot of our peers have fallen by the wayside, but we're still here. And he cares about his city. Yeah. He cares about the community. He can get very angry on the radio, but that makes it even more enjoyable. I hope he does tonight. Oh yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> sure he will. will I'm sure he uh, will. Down the Dock Road, it's happening in Royal Courts. Yes, we're Absolutely. very excited about it. Yeah, it's, um, it's a revival of Alan Bleasdale's classic play. It's set on the last day of the docks for this guy, Grandad. I'm playing Grandad. I saw it when I was 21 and I'm playing Grandad. So um, it's, a, it's a fantastic play. It's Bleasdale at his best. It was the template for Boys from the Black Stuff. Um, it's a 40 year celebration. It's um, Alan's 70th birthday within the production. 
it's perfect timing to bring one of our, well, I think our greatest writer, if not one of Britain's greatest writers, to the forefront again. Yeah. And I'm really excited about it. We've got a great cast. And one of your Corey co-stars is, is now starring alongside you. Too. Oliver Farnworth, yeah, yeah who plays uh, my uh, fake son, Gavin Stroke Andy, Gandhi, as we call him now, um, in, in the street. And uh, he's playing Dobbo here. He's, he's the... Um, He's the Errol Flynn of Lee Park. <laughs> Lee Park. Yeah, yeah. Lee Park. Well, listen, we're looking forward to seeing it. When does it open, World Court? We open on the 11th of March, and it runs until the 9th of April. Um, and it, buy your tickets. It's going well. Pricey. Pricey will tell you to buy your tickets. <laughs> yeah. Go and enjoy tonight, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank I you. can't wait to hear it. Let's let us thank you. So we're at the Hilton. Pricey's roasting is on. Um, every time I say Pricey's roasting, <laughs> I just feel really weird. Uh, uh, with me as someone who's worked, I've been a friend of people for a long time, Kev Seeds. Uh, how are you, mate? I'm very well, thank you. Very well. And I, and I feel exactly the same whenever <laughs> anyone mentions Pricey's Roasting. You know, I, I can't stop laughing. I think if for one minute people are going to start taking a mickey out of it, <laughs> and other people are thinking other, other stuff. You should start a hashtag. People hashtag Roasting. <laughs> Uh, what are you expecting tonight? Because I've never been to a, ro a real nice roast. <laughs> well, are you sure about that? Because yeah. I remember the last time we were in my party. <laughs> you took a proper roasting. Um, no, I'm expecting him to be roasted. Good. <laughs> I'm expecting it to be a really good night. Um, I think he'll take. <laughs> See, there's, a, there's like an innuendo with everything we say really about roasting. Really I think is. he'll take it well. <laughs> he'll take it like a proper man. Um, and no, I think he will. I think he's put himself. In a place where I feel he'll be uncomfortable. <laughs> a bit later. <laughs> Tell us about you and Pricey. You've been mates a long time. Yeah, I've worked with uh, Pete for a... You know, you say what he wants about him. He's a good lad, isn't he? He's a great lad. Um, he gets a lot of abuse. He gets uh, a lot of uncalled for abuse, I think. Uh, and, and those that don't know him, clearly don't know him. He's, uh, he's uh, a lovely man, a genuine man, an honest man, a funny man. Um, but he's a man with an opinion, and I think that's why he's lasted so long on the radio. But he's got something to say, and he puts up. I couldn't. I remember one time when I was at Radio City Breakfast, and uh, several times the boss said, "Look, price is off tomorrow or, or tonight or whatever. Uh, could you stand in for him?" And let me tell you, I, I absolutely crap myself. <laughs> it's okay that I could do a breakfast show and I could go on stage in front of 55, 60,000 people when we do Party of the Park or whatever it's called now, um, Party of the Pond. Uh, <laughs> But to do his show takes some balls, takes some balls, let me tell you. Um, and uh, I personally don't think I'm very, I, I, I'm clever enough to do his show. You know, he's a very knowledgeable man. You've got to be clever, in it, and that, that's what people don't realise with him. He is a very clever man, isn't he? Well, who knows what people are going to throw at you? A bit like tonight, he hasn't got a clue what people are going to throw at him. But on that radio, he puts up with a lot of abuse. Don't get me wrong, that's part and parcel as to why this show has been successful, because people like the abuse as well. Uh, but he doesn't know from one minute to the next who's going to ask him about something that we don't know anything about and that's where you've got to be on your toes and I admire him for that You were at Radio City for a long time we used to work together That's right, yeah um, and we used to have a few good nights out together as we well We used to have more than a few good nights out <laughs> yeah. together uh, tell, us, tell us what you love about that place folks. looking uh, back at, at what you've done over there the legacy you left and massive, massive show, Kevin Yeah, absolutely uh, huge uh, the figures are fantastic um, it was a great place to work I'll never forget the day that I got the job, um, never forget it. It was just the best, I, th I thought I'd won the lottery. Um, working there, the, the first show, putting that microphone up. In fact, even now when I see any photographs of Radio City, in fact, or any studio, any radio studio, I get a little kind of tingle. Yeah. But it's just, that's what I love and that's what I do best. And I, until the day I die, I will always get the same feeling when I see uh, a radio studio, and especially Radio City. But working at Radio City was fantastic, a great opportunity. Um, and 12 and a half fantastic years with the best figures ever, uh, which I'm very proud of. Working alongside fantastic people. Like Pricey. Uh, Pricey included. Um, meeting fantastic people. It was just the best job in the world. Some people go to work and hate getting up on a morning. Um, I believe it doesn't matter what time you're in work, whether you're in work at 6 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning, you always want five more minutes in bed. <laughs> Sometimes I wanted five, Sometimes five more days. Five more hours. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> but throws Kev now on the camera. <laughs> Chrissy Rock said before, I said, have you ever roasted anyone? She wants not even know spuds. <laughs> so it's going to well, be funny tonight. I'm looking forward to it. And, and it's great to see you. And we're sure we'll catch up tonight. Thank you, Jay. Looking forward to it tonight. Nice to see you, mate. Cheers. Go on. Okay, so we've been out. We got Herbert with us. Uh, we got Stan Boardman. Kev Seed is back. Um, 
Stan, you're, you're doing the roasting tonight, mate. Well, I've never done one before, but... Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've got some got KY plenty. jelly here for you. I have heard about it. I think they do it in America, but it'd be interesting to see how it goes today, yeah. Have you, have you prepared for this? Or no, or just all nothing at all. Organically? Nothing at all. I don't understand what it's about. I'll watch the others do a bit, and then I'll jump in at the end. That's right. Best way to do it. But I'll follow Herbert. I'm not going on. Aren't you? I can't. I know, I know supper. too much about him. Oh, right, it's OK. I do. But well, you said to me before, you know, what can we say about Peter? I said, well, you know, he's going to be roasted in there, and they're going to be really horrible. We've got to say something good about him, but what good is there about there him? There must be one thing we've all each got to say nice about Pete Price. Right. Well, I think I think Peter is a kind of fella. If you uh, if you if you give him lent him a thousand pound and you'd never seen him again, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you can see where it's going tonight, can't we? Oh yes, yes I know. <laughs> no, I I. I've known him for many, many years, and I love the man. I've always loved him, and he's just such a great friend. We've had some wonderful times together. Uh, the nice type of times, not the one that people talk about. You know, Peter and I have always been like brothers, you know, and I'm so made up to come tonight. And I'm glad they're not asking me to say anything about it. Well, we might, might give you a little mic on the sly here, but I don't want the sly mic. He knows, Do you he knows more mic? secrets. What? about Pete Price than the news of the world. Yeah. I'll tell you another thing. I was going to say something else, but I can't say it because we are on television. We are on television. Are we? And, and he, he, he doesn't want to see the, all the programme. He just wants to see the highlights. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm shocked, really, Herbert. I would have thought you and him must have had a roasting at some point. Has he ever roasted you? He has never roasted me, and I've never roasted him. Really? But if you're asking... <laughs> well, that's all going to change tonight. If you're asking, <laughs> Herbert, Stan, Kevin, thank you. Uh, well, I think it's going to be a good night. We hope it's right. Pete's been around for a long, long time. Very long. Yeah. And uh, Too long. There's a lot of things that all these people in this uh, hotel know about him, which hopefully... The police are listening in. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, he's never been on a springboard in his life, but he knows all the dives, doesn't he? Oh, well. <laughs> That's a nice one. Have a good night. Enjoy. I remember when he had piles once. I went round to his house. And he was sitting on the beanbag. <laughs> Lovely girl. As, I, and he was sitting on the beanbag. I said, how I said, there. Uh, how are we doing? He said, all right. I said, nice beanbag. He said, <laughs> have another look. <laughs> Have another look.